Hi, this is Julia Whitup with Talk Story TV, and I have with me today Cassie Wills, who is an event planner in Australia, and I'll just let her tell us more about that. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, listen, we, we love it. We love our business. Um, it's an amazing thing to be able to share uh, in people's weddings and certainly their pre-wedding party. Um, we specialize in life drawing, um, which is obviously the sketching of, of a nude. So groups of girls will come together with us um, and participate, doing a really creative experience and getting to, to sketch and, and getting to learn some skills um, while still bonding and having a great hen's day. How fun. So that's what they always do, or you have different types of... We have a few different services that we offer, but that's our main one. We also do um, burlesque parties, so where the girls get to dress up and they get to dance as, as their hen's party. Um, and we also do some creative cooking classes as well. But we, you know, we specialize in making sure these girls have a creative experience in their party. How fun. <laughs> How how and do you only do the pre-wedding parties or do you do Absolutely. other events no no we specialize in in hens parties uh, probably 85 percent of our work would, would be the hens party market and the other 15 uh, percent would be some corporate so we do corporate team building for creative companies uh-huh what do you mean by creative companies well usually like your your marketing companies or your ad agencies um Weirdly, we did a job last week for a for a government organisation who wanted to bring their team together. Um, so they they actually um, they selected a dancing party, which I thought was really fun. Uh huh. They selected. Oh, that's good. So. Yeah. So, so government employees <laughs> dancing around and all being <laughs> burlesque, which is kind of completely it's completely different to what they would normally do. So I thought that that was a great idea for them and a really good selection. Uh huh. How fun! So you get to, you get paid for doing parties. <laughs> for Absolutely. Parties. <laughs> Absolutely. My my mum always said something. Said that you've got to you've got to do something that you're really good at. Or you've got to sell something that you're really good at. So for me, that was either shoes, or parties. They're the two things that I'm really really good at. Uh -huh. So I wasn't going to go into shoes, so I went into event planning. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, so I've um, I've been planning events for the past ten years, and, and I've I've absolutely loved it. I, I love the the feeling for you, the, being able to find the right event for the for the right person, and really marrying that up. And that's that's a wonderful feeling because when they have their party, they're so thankful and they're so you know they're so excited because they've you know they've been able to participate in something that was really good for them. And when did you? How old were you when you decided to do this? I started the business when I was twenty four. Uh huh. Okay. So the last yeah, the last ten years. And what did, what made you think of that, or how were you inspired to do this type of business? <laughs> Weirdly, I um I actually started a, started a business before this one, um, which um was hiring um out male waiters, and that came about because I'd just been I'd actually just been divorced. And I couldn't find a date to the races, the horse races that we had to go to one day. And I remember crying to my mum saying, you know, no one's, you know, you don't go anywhere as a woman by yourself. I said, I'm going to start renting men. And so I did. I, I just started, I thought in my brain, I was going to start renting social partners and people were going to go to weddings with, with my, with my men. And that was going to be the way it was. But uh, it quickly morphed into something else. And we started doing topless waiters and bar staff and corporate events. And that's pretty much how, how it started. And then the second business came from there some six, uh, some five years later. But it was just an easy progression for me. It's always been events. It doesn't matter what the medium. It was always me planning the event or having something to do with, with the women's events. And what, what city do you live in? You must have a big audience to support a business like that. I live. I currently live on the Gold Coast, but I was in Sydney when I started this. Uh -huh. um, but we've got 144 contractors nationally, so oh, okay. so we cover the whole country. Oh, you do. Okay, wow. I didn't know there was so much business in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, there absolutely is. Absolutely. How amazing. Okay. Well, what else do you want to tell us about it? Oh. I'm, I'm, what would you like to know? I mean, there's so many facets, facets, facets of the business that I can share with you. 
really? Like, um, okay, what? So, how do you get the business in the first place? I guess how do how do people hear about you? Sure. So we advertise on a range of different um, wedding websites. So, um, and we also do um, we do a lot of P, a lot of PR. So we do our own um, PR. So we do call outs for for interviews and that sort of stuff. And we get a lot of um, interest through that. But because the business has been running for the past ten years, we find that we get probably sixty five percent of our work is repeat business. Oh, because we've, okay. Yeah, because we've we've got a good name. Um, because they you know, get their party through you, so all their friends have their parties through you. Well, that's exactly right. At any given party, there's sort of really 15 to 20 people, and you know what it's like. As soon as one person gets married, there's something in the water, and there's a string of uh, there's a string of events. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, the chance of us picking up say two to three jobs from any one party is quite high if we do a good job. So, you know, most of our work definitely comes through through repeat business. Okay. Wow. So, what else? Um, Let's see, so that's how you get business, and then you do either you do the drawing or the dancing or all the cooking or the cooking, and that's pretty much the three that you do. Yeah, there are three main ones. They're they're the easiest ones for people to get involved in um, <laughs> because they're they're easy sort of they're, they're an easy skill set. And do you do the pre parties for the guys too, or just for the women? No, we only do women. Oh, okay. Yeah, we've probably done three bucks parties in the last three years. It's just not a massive market. Guys tend to go a different way on uh, on a bucks party. You know, they're looking for, dare I say, strippers and, you know, nudity and that sort of stuff. When that's not the market that we cater to, we cater to, to the higher end and a classier type of – we're a classier type of event. So it, that's just not a good fit for, um, for bucks parties, but that's okay. Yeah. We've done three, and they were all um, second marriages and slightly older. So, yeah, and that was that was fine. They were really creative and had a great time. Um, you know, that just, they weren't looking for a strip club. Right. Okay. Wow. Well, this sounds like a very fun business, and hopefully you'll get some leads from this show today. Sure, so, let's see. You huh? Know. You never know, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any tips for people who are planning their own? Oh, Absolutely. Make a solid list. Everybody needs a list when it comes to planning an event. Uh, you certainly need to figure out what you want to do, what the budget is. If anyone has any dietary requirements, and I know that sounds a bit weird, but the amount of people these days that, that can't go to certain things because they can't cater to their dietary needs, that's important to find out first. Also figure out whether you're going to bring um, parents, grandparents, and so on, or if you're going to split the day up between morning with, with family and then afternoon with your girls. It's important to know because not everything will be suited to every age group. So that's really important to know straight off the bat. Right. I think okay. once you've got that. Oh, and also my, my, my key tip here, if you can take anything from this, make sure there's not too many chiefs. There's too many chiefs and not enough Indians. <laughs> in, a, in a hen's party scenario, it is terrible when you're trying to book something because if you've got four or five bridesmaids all trying to book the same thing, it's too many people. One to two people can be in charge and everybody else just needs to follow suit. Just do otherwise, what gets, told. <laughs> well, otherwise it just gets it gets really really difficult and it gets quite painful for the bride because she has to be the go between between this stuff and it's 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 not fair on that on her on her day. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. Absolutely. Could, Absolutely. Where can people find out more about you? They can find out on www.art art the numeral four p l a y .com.au. Okay, thank you. Thanks so much.